Hi guys, welcome back to Modifix. My name's Dan, and today we're on the fourth episode of the turbo build. So, needless to say, today we are modding. Today we're going to cover quite a lot of stuff, so we're going to restuff the exhaust because the baffles are gone. I bought it like that. But anyway, we'll sort that out. We've got some vac lines to run. We've only got two at the moment, but we've got a manifold and we've got to distribute to the, the turbo actuator and the dump valve, etc., etc. So I'll show you how to do that. And then we also have a catch counter plumbing. So I just want to do that, show you how I do that, build brackets, etc. And basically try and get all the mechanical side of things wrapped up the best I can. So yeah, hope you enjoy the video. All right, guys, next step, what I'm going to do is I think this silencer is a bit knackered. I bought it second hand because it was the only thing that would fit in this hole. And I don't think you can buy these. I don't know what it is, where it came from or anything. Um, I just bought it off eBay and it's a good solid stainless steel can. The only problem is, is that I think all the baffles are dead inside it and you know, it's loud enough as it is, as you probably heard before. So what I want to do is I want to make an incision in this box and fill it with stainless steel wool. I'm going to make an incision about the size of my fist so I can get my hand in there and wrap the wool around and then get it welded up and I'll get my mate to do that. So that's why I'm doing that now. She's marked up to be cut out. I'm just gonna cut a flap. So I'm only gonna cut three of those edges, yeah? And then pull it out, stuff it, and then, pardon my garage door alarm. Uh, yeah, stuff it and then push the flap back down, get it welded up. And so let's open it up. I'm actually interested to see what's inside because it sounds like the baffles are knackered. So let's have a look. All right, so. As you can probably see in there, can you see that? Yeah, the wire wall is pretty much dead. And it's just flapping around in there, it's turned into a bit of a lump. So what we'll do is I've got some brand new stainless wool here. We're gonna get that in there and wrap it around. And then maybe if I, if I haven't got enough here, is that the size of the box? Pretty much. So if um, I do run out or have a problem, then I will get some stainless scourers from the local Tesco or something and try them. I don't know if I can even get them from the local Tesco, but let's see how we get on. All right, so the exhaust is back from surgery. What we did was we, well, as you saw, I opened it up there. And then what I did was I stuffed it full of stainless steel wire wool. After that, I stuffed the remainder with stainless scourer pads, you know, like the Brillo pads sort of style ones. I'll ping a picture up now and that is stuffed now and I've just weighed it and it comes in at 4.6 kilos not terrible I've just tidied up those welds a little bit with a flappy disc I don't want to go too mad on them because I don't want it to like sort of crack open again or something <laughs> um, there's plenty of meat there really but I don't think I'm going to get it perfect I mean this side is quite level so it's come out quite nice but this one's um I don't think I'm going to get it that flat and the same with this really so I think I'm going to leave it at that. Um, no one's going to see it anyway. It's going to be underneath, so you can see stuff from the top unless you're under the car. Uh, and when you're under the car, I don't think you're going to be bothered. It's more about function over form. So, uh, yeah, that's going to get left. I think I'm going to polish it a little bit more, uh, polish the rest of the can really, and then put it back on the car. Before, because if I did one before, then we'd have a good reference point to do one after. But unfortunately not and another thing was the can was really light as well before as i say i filled it with steel wool and about six packets of those stainless steel brillos so uh it's gained some weight as well but as long as it's a little bit quieter i'll be happy because i've just tidied up those welds a little bit more that'll do for now i'm just going to stick it on the car and do some tests and then i think i'll polish it up from the top so I think the car has been on these jack stands for so long now so I want to get it down so the oil's level and all that stuff see where everything sits relative to the ground as well in terms of the uh, intercooler and the exhaust and everything else and then I want to run some engine flush through the car I need to I've got some exciting bits actually I'll show you in a minute
right guys next bit of the project is to fit this catch can so I've got two inlets and then I'm gonna have a breather on top of it and I'm gonna have the PCV pipe go around the engine around the back and into here and then the same with the, the one coming out of there so um, these are 10 mil I'm gonna reduce those down to 10 mil and then just run pipes from there I'll probably lock that pipe about there and put the reducer in run the pipe round and then a new pipe all the way around for that one with a 8 to 10 mil reducer on there so uh, where to mount it so I'm thinking around about here somewhere so let me try and mock it up and then I'll uh, give you a shout what I'm thinking about actually doing is taking that 10 mil bolt out there with the earth on it putting that over here somewhere because those two are redundant now those are the uh, evap can 10 mils so i'll relocate that to there and then use that for the catch can relocated that earth over there it's got like a fancy sort of tab on it which sort of slots into the metal at the top on the other side it's got two holes but see where that bolts coming out there so that goes the top tab goes into that hole and then it just bolts in there so i mean your bolts going to be the main source of earth anyway so I think it will be absolutely fine in its new location and here we shall start looking at making a bracket to hold the breather let's do it a couple of hours later actually, i should have lost track of time but anyway i've got that and the bolts it's offset i'm reusing the little earth tab bit to stabilize it so it don't move around and then those two holes go into the catch tank so now I'm just going to finalise it a little bit, shape it up and paint it. Well actually before I paint it I'm going to do a mock up with the breather catch tank in place and do all the plumbing. Then once I've done that then I'll paint it. This is the finished article for the bracket. Looks like a bit of a, a, bit of a serpent. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's the finished article now. Uh, I'm just going to do a mock up, make sure it fits the hole still. That's it. Catch can's in position now, so there's a little tab in there to prevent it from going side to side. So that's pretty solid in there now, and I'll reuse that bolt there, and the old catch can is in place. There's a bit of movement up and down. I think we'll call that done. But first, I just want to make sure my induction pipe clears. Okay, and as you can see there, oh, I forgot to mention I made this bracket as well. Um, <laughs> this one here, that actually double nuts onto the Jubilee and holds this nice and tight so it clears that by a couple of millimeters and it clears the engine more importantly by about a mile by about a centimeter actually so that's really good so once you tighten that nut washer there nut there tighten that up that's a nylock anyway so that holds nice but anyway back to the subject good clearance down there i'm happy with that lots of space it's about an inch between that pipe and that breather um, so we're all good so now I'm just gonna do the plumbing for the catch tank and then paint that bracket plumbing time so this PCV is 10 mil out of diameter and that breather there is 16 mil measured with a caliper the catch can actually in the advert said it only came with two 10 mil or 6 mil fittings I think it was and it's actually come if those are 14 and those are 12 and then you've got the tens um, and I didn't realize so I thought if the tens the biggest then what I'll do is order reducers that's 10 anyway so that'll go 10 to 10 and then that one I reduced it down from 16 mil to 10 mil and then 10 mil down into there so I've used the original hose that comes out of that breather there reduced it down to 10 mil and then from there I'm gonna go straight down to the catch can and 10 mil straight from there to there now if i had known i had a 14 mil connector i would have just got some 14 mil pipe to come straight out of there or go 16 to 14 or four, well i could have just gone 14 straight and just clamped it down so i might do that in the future if it's a big deal but for now i'm just going to go with the plan and 10 mil down 10 mil down and that's it we're done all right so as you can see now we've got that coming out of there and going all the way around the back and then down there into the catch can and then we've got the other one 
coming straight out of there down and into the catch can all nice and neat and tidy might put a little cable tie there just to put those two together make them look nicer and then yeah we're pretty much done oh what i've also bought which i forgot about is a bung for that so i'm going to put that on now okay so the bung is on that vacuum pipe that originally came to pcv came through that gap there and as a result i was having trouble getting this jubilee clip positioned nicely because it was clashing with this one so i decided i'll decommission the pipe and maybe use another pipe and take a different route instead of through there and it's really bizarre because although that's a 10 mil on that side look at the other side that's 14 maybe 16 mil it's got a really weird flared end to it that goes in i don't know if you're gonna be able to see it from here I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this down there, but that goes in there, All right? So, um, and that's the intake manifold, as far as I can tell, just behind there, yeah? So I'm thinking, do I reuse that and jubilee it down, or do I put a fatter pipe on there and then reduce it coming out? Because I'm going to use that as my main vacuum now to uh, plumb into my little manifold, which is going to go up here, but I'll show you that later on. All right guys, the cap is on and tightened up. I was just mucking about with houses, but anyway, I've, I've rerouted that as well a little bit. And uh, cable tie there, so it's all nice and neat now. So that's done. So basically, I've just got to paint that bracket now. And then that's all done, finished. Okay, next I need to reconfigure this area here. As I was saying previously, this is actually sitting on top of the gear linkage, which is not allowing me to change gear, so. <laughs> Um, I had it cable tied up earlier so I could move the car around but what I've got to solve that issue is a nice 45 so that that 45 comes off there and then goes down that should fix that issue and then I've got to find a new way of putting the dump valve in okay so as you can see the 45's in there now I've got plenty of clearance from that now I have to uh, do something with these water pipes to keep them up as well but anyway we're clearing the, the gear linkages now and we've got a bit of clearance down here as well so that's really good but now we've got a problem the dump valve so let me show you what we're going to do there all right guys i just reconfigured the pipes a little bit so 90 out of there 90 back and then up dump valve i had this nice dump valve t fitting for a while now i didn't use it because it was stainless steel it's a bit heavy but it'll be fine and then 90 into there 90 45 into there and then 90 into there so the bit that's changed is this 45 here and now as you can see there's plenty of clearance between the uh, gear linkage and the pipes as you can see there I actually pull that up a little bit as well that's the water pipe that normally would go straight into there and you wouldn't have this problem but because this is now going into turbo down the bottom it's been pulled down so i thought i'd cable tight a little bit i might pull it up a little bit more actually up to about there and then we'll be all right i'll run this water pipe up the top as well so it doesn't pull down onto the gear linkage so yeah i'll zip that up a little bit more but yeah the reason i haven't clamped anything up yet is because i'm going to paint that shiny bit matte black and i think the forge dump valve is going black as well I don't like too many shiny bits in the bay. Attract too much attention. I like it a little bit covert, if you like. So yeah, I'll paint those up and then uh, let's move on to the next thing. I think the next thing is gonna be the vac um, manifold that's gonna sit here. And then we can send uh, some vacuum to the actuator, also to the dump valve. And we need a feed for the, the map sensor on the boost gauge. So really in total we need four vacuum sources. So we're gonna have one main metal to the manifold and then we'll go from there. All right, so this is my vacuum manifold that I keep going on about. We're gonna have vacuum going into that and then probably from here down and into the map sensor. And then out of here, we've got plenty of holes for the actuators, blow off valve, whatever you want. So that's it. So these holes here were like a m4 or m5 i've just honed them out to m6 so that i can reuse this bolt hole here and maybe drill another one let's see the actuator is now plumbed in 
So that goes around the engine that way. I wanted to go around the cold side, I didn't want to go past the exhaust, so you know, around that way. And then what I've done, vacuum that actually originally went to that VCV valve, um, which is back there now. I actually rotated it in the hole and I've sent it this way instead. So up there, I don't know if you can see that, I've actually put a bit of weld silicon around the um, Jubilee clip, but what I've done is I've put a reducer in there from 10 down to 6 mil and then run a vacuum line straight from there down into the actuator. So that's done, so I'm happy about that. And then the other big vacuum that went had a massive reducer on it on the back, the one that was originally uh, doing the PCV valve, I've um, used that, I've rotated that also, so it's going around that way instead. Don't know if you can see that yet. Yeah. And that's going straight into the manifold and then out of the manifold into the blow off valve um, and that's it for now. I've got to have another one for the map oh, and the one for the boost gauge as well. So map sensor will probably come out of that end, I've got fitting for that. And the boost gauge will probably come out of there and straight down into the car. So yeah, good progress today guys. Um, just wanted to say on an ending note, what I'm going to do for tonight is all of these shiny bits are going black. So the dump valve is getting painted black. The uh, That little T connector is going to get painted black, although I'm tempted to leave that because it doesn't look too bad. And um, this baby here is going to get painted black as well. I don't really want too many shiny look at me bits in the engine bay. I want it to be nice and covert and all black and looking very timid. But when you open your eyes, ooh, what's that? All right, guys, this is kind of going to be the final setup now. The manifold's been painted black now. I actually put two more nipples on there, one ready for the boost gauge, and one I've just blanked. They're both blanked off, actually, but I've just blanked them both off ready. So when I do need to use them, I can. And they're there. I don't have to faff around putting, uh, putting the um, fittings on. So that's done, and it's painted black. Blow off valve is now black, and it's plumbed in ready to rock and roll the 45 degree bend has been put in and it clears the gear linkage beautifully now as you can see i've cable tied that up there so that's out of the way of the gear linkage as well i'm just going to jump in the car and check that in a minute and then we go down here and we've got good clearance here as well now into the intercooler if i shake that there's no noises, which is great, so it's not making contact with anything. Around there, exhaust is all done. And then we've got pipe coming out of the intercooler into the turbo. And then you've got the intake pipe into the turbo, which is now mounted up nice and solid there. And then down there into the hole for nice, fresh, cold air with the uh, repositioned dipstick. Um, and then I've made that lovely bracket there to hold all this tight so it doesn't rattle around. That's nice and solid. And then you've got the breather down there and that's all plumbed in. So we're pretty much done now. All right guys, hope you enjoyed that episode. Uh, we covered quite a lot today. We've got most of the mechanical stuff wrapped up now. There's a few finishing touches to do, but hopefully it'll be injectors and ECU now and we'll be rocking and rolling or turbo boosting, should I say. But before we do that, there is something else I need to do. So watch out for the next episode. Um, it's quite interesting. And then after that, we should be seeing boost with any luck. Hope you enjoyed this episode, guys. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you in the next one.